I'm always amazed when I go to the store to see how many power tools, portable power tools, power tool batteries, chargers have been thrown in the electronic recycling shed. So this this charger is from a drill master, Harbor Freight drill master. I actually have a couple of these that I've had for a very long time. So I brought it home and we'll see if we can't fix it. Now, when you turn, when this is plugged in, the light on this charging adapter should come on. The LED is not on. And we can verify that also with a multimeter. It's marked 22 volts, 500 milliamps, so it's half an amp, 22 volts. Let's see if we have any voltage. And we don't show. anything three one hundredths of a volt so it's dead now all right turn this off let's fix it to take this apart there's just four screws these are security screws, meaning they're not Phillips, they're not slotted. You need to buy yourself a little set of security screwdriver bits. They're cheap enough. The bits will go into a magnetic screwdriver like this. This particular one uses that type of bit. They come right out. You just need the right bit. Now, here's what's wrong with this AC adapter. All right, we have two sides. This is the DC side. We've just got a linear power supply here with four rectifiers. There's nothing wrong with the DC side. But on the AC side, and this will be covered by yellow tape, so you've got to very carefully remove all the tape that's here, you're going to find a fuse. And that's what this is. And the fuse is open. Let's prove it. So we'll put our meter on ohms touch across the fuse we should see if it's good we, that should swim here so you touch these together it goes to zero ohms and if the fuse is good that should go to zero ohms well it doesn't it stays on overload infinite resistance so all we have to do is Put a fuse across a new fuse across that fuse and it's going to work so here's how we're going to prove it i have a little replacement fuse right here this one's 500 milliamps i don't think this draws anywhere near half an amp on ac but it's the smallest one i have so we'll just put it across this one I want to make sure this is not touching. Make sure this is off. Very carefully plug it in. And we'll plug this end. Into the battery pack. Can we see all that? All right, now nothing's touching, looks safe. I'll turn this on, we should get a light. And we do. So that's it. 
somebody threw away a perfectly good charger because a 20 cent fuse was blown. We're going to replace that right now and put it all back together. Okay. So steps so far, we unscrewed the AC adapter. We peeled off whatever tape was here to expose the fuse. We tested it with a multimeter, found that it was open. We proved that we could fix it by putting a new fuse across the open fuse. Now we don't have to remove the open fuse. There's plenty of room here. We can just solder this like right below it here. However, we can do it. We just have to solder this across the open fuse. You could cut it out if you wanted to. It's not necessary. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to solder it across this. Okay, perfectly fine. I'll cut off these excess leads, put it back together. We should be all set. Before we put this back together, uh, it's a good idea to test it because these tiny fuses are heat sensitive. And if we have too much heat when we soldered it, we may have opened it up. So let's just make sure we still have continuity. And there we go. Yes, we do still have it. So the new fuse is still good. We're reading four tenths of an ohm. My leads, if I really squeeze the leads, I guess you could polish it, but the leads themselves are giving us a little bit of that. So, okay, we did not destroy the fuse, soldering it in. Now, what about the transformer windings? Did we break the transformer windings while we were doing this? Because they're very fragile. So here's what you're expecting. On the AC side of the transformer, we should see about 50 ohms. So let's just see if we've got 50 ohms here. And we do. And on the DC side of the transformer, the contacts are right here. We should see about 2 ohms. And we've got it. So the fuse is good. We haven't broken the transformer windings, so if we're careful when we put this back together, it should work for us.
just snug these. You don't want to use too much pressure. I'm just using the tips of my fingers and when I start to encounter resistance I give it up. Remember, you're, you're just screwing into plastic. Okay. All right, so now we're going to test it. We'll put this back on volts. What are we looking for again? 22 volts, 500 mils on the DC side. Any joy? No joy? Give me a break. Turn it on. There we go. 20 volts. All fixed. All right, let's put it into the power pack. See if we get a light. This was our problem before. It was dead. And we have a light. We're all fixed for the cost of a 20 cent fuse. Okay, some questions. How do we know that the size of the fuse that I put in, which was this one, 500 mils or half an amp, how do we know that is going to be enough? How do we know it's not going to blow on us again? Well, we can, I'd estimated that was more than enough protection for this device, but we'll we'll see what it actually draws using this kilowatt meter. So plug it in. All right, let's put this on amps. Zero amps right now. Okay, we're charging, and according to the kilowatt meter, we are drawing 160 mils. So 0.16 amps is 160 mils, and we are charging. We put 500 mils in there, so that, that's more than enough protection. If I'd had a 250 mil, that would have worked. 200 mil would have worked. Uh, and yet at the same time, 500 mil will blow before this melts or, or causes any problem. So yep, we're good. 500 mils is good. Okay, next question. You don't have any soldering equipment. You don't want to bother fixing this AC adapter. It's too much trouble. Is there any other way to, to fix this? Well, yeah. This is a 22 volt 500 mil AC adapter. Have an old laptop adapter that might work. Let's check my stash. Take that, Musty. All right. You know who Musty One is? One of the most interesting channels on YouTube. Uh, just a phenomenal guy. What do we got here? And he has a tremendous stash of all kinds of machine parts. It's unbelievable. And the skills? Yep. Wish I knew one one hundredth what that guy knows. All right, what do we got here? This one says 19 volts. Nah, I got something better than that. What's this one? This is a gateway. 24 volts. Oh boy, that should be good. That's very close. Let's see if this is going to work. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is check the size of the DC plug. And these are fairly similar. Let's see if it's going to fit the 
battery adapter. Seems to fit quite well. It's a good tight fit. And this is a good tight fit. It's a standard power cord, a short one. We don't need a big one here. Plug it in. Turn it on. And there we go. We're charging. All right, let's plug it into the kilowatt, see what kind of juice we're drawing. This is a more powerful adapter than the one we just fixed. So I'm thinking this is going to charge a lot faster. Oh, look at that. So 450 mils right off the bat. That's three times as fast a charge as the other one. So you wouldn't want to leave this on charge very long. That one's a one to three hour charger. I would say this is going to have everything all done in about one hour. Much, much faster charger. Just an old laptop adapter. It's a gateway, 24 volt, 1.87 amps. It would work. Uh, I like having the original, but this would work just as well. And that got me thinking. If we could charge our 18 volt power tool battery off of an 18 volt laptop charger could we also charge it directly off of an 18 volt solar panel and what about 18 volt laptop batteries could we charge those directly off of an 18 volt solar panel C could we run our laptops directly off of an 18 volt solar panel We'll answer those questions next time on Backup Power Project, Solar Direct Charging Secrets. Thanks for watching.